day to you. I hope you're well. I'd like to share some thoughts on stuff that was banging around in my head yesterday. I was at a Zoom-based Bishop study day yesterday. Thankfully not all day. Uh, just an hour. But they had a very, very um, interesting thinker and speaker. And she was making the observation that one of the ironies of our culture is this gap between desire and fulfilment, that in a, a consumerist economic model, there's this constant uh, stimulus of desire with the idea that you can have everything you want. And of course, we have this idea, this aspiration that if we, uh, if we get our million pounds, then we'll be set, we'll be fine, we'll be well. Of course, it's rubbish, and, and I don't know if you've experienced this, but I know every step towards what I desire, I get what I want, that's fine. But in some sense, it isn't what I want. There's always an unquenched longing somewhere in there. And, and rather obviously, the point that was being drawn out is, th is this unquenched longing, this desire that we have that doesn't seem to ever find its fulfilment in the life we lead, is ultimately our desire for God, is ultimately our desire for unity with him. Hence, ultimately, if we wish to quench the longing of our heart, then the task is to keep a continued focus, a continued attentiveness, to the God who calls us into himself. I mixed that up this morning in my devotions with Psalm 1, which is the psalm for today. If you follow the Book of Common Prayer, it says this, Blessed is the one who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the seat of sinners, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on the, his law he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does he prospers. The wicked are not so. They are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous but the way of the wicked will perish. Now what's very striking is the writer is talking about the way to be rooted in this world is to root yourself, in this case he's saying the law of the Lord, basically the Bible. Now I don't know how long you've ever tried working with the Bible, but the Bible, rather weirdly, is not as rooted as we'd like to think. It's not like um, an Ikea map of how to construct a cupboard where there's join A to B and C to D and stick X to Y and lo and behold you end up with a cupboard. Fulfilment arrives in the shape of a, a, a cupboard in place because you followed the instructions. The Bible itself is weirdly transient in some ways. You, you, you start at the beginning and, and although there's a consistent theme and story, you often, when you connect with the Bible, are not left with as much clarity as you want. You get some nuggets and, and God comes to you. And, and then other times you're still chewing over questions and concerns for years. I mean, interestingly, of course, this, this tree that meditates on the, this person that meditates on the law, law of the Lord day and night, he's like a, he's a tree planted by streams of water. And these streams are always moving. So what does that give us? It gives us this sense that actually if we want to become stable, if we want to grow, if we want to shade others, then actually there's a sense where we have to root ourselves into this living, breathing, moving, changing, confusing even, thing we call the Bible. That's really odd, isn't it? That Actually, you'd have thought that satisfaction for our unquenched longings would be in 
complete understanding, the building of the cupboard through following the instructions. And actually, we're being called into something that is less secure, perhaps, than the IKEA map of how to build a cupboard. And yet, we're being told that this is what stabilises us. This is what enables us to grow. Allowing ourselves to be in that place of constant question, of constant seeking, of constant rooting in that journey of faith. It is weird, isn't it? Join me in it. It's what I do every day. I ain't got there yet. <laughs> and let's continue to long for God. I'm going to pray now. So for those of you who switch off at this point, now's the time. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm based on morning prayer on Wednesday, but I don't try and follow it because I'll jump around a little bit. Let's pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out? You have made them little lower than the angels, and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands, and put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So let's pray for today, for the world and its needs, and for the church and her life. Heavenly Father, in all the small things of today, help us to continue to root ourselves in you, in the ways that our emotions batter us, that our yearnings draw us, Help us to continually focus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world and its needs. We lift to you friends in Leicester, the communities in Leicester that are now facing lockdown again. Bless them. Save them. We pray also for our government for wisdom and courage. And we pray that as they focus on other matters of government, the economy, our relationship with Europe, that you bless them with that courage and that wisdom as they go along. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your church and her life. We pray for our benefits and our churches as we think about and work out how we are going to be together again. Bless us with wisdom. Grow us in your Holy Spirit and give us a shared longing to worship you together, however it is. We pray for our bishops, Dagmar and Stephen. Give them energy, courage and wisdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So our collect. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you've brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Right? See you Friday. God bless you. Bye.